Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar on Selling Beyond Amazon. We have a great li list of speakers, topics, questions to cover, and I thank you guys all for attending. We have a great um, group of attendees, and so looking for you guys to get a lot of great knowledge out of this. We have three amazing sellers and influencers in the space to share their stories, so let's jump right into it. For those that are not familiar with myself, my name is Jeff Cohen. I've had about 14 years of experience in e-commerce. Started my first site called textbooks.com before getting into selling on Amazon. I've been a seller on Amazon and I currently sit on the executive team at Seller Labs. For those that are new to Seller Labs, Seller Labs is a software development company. We work with over 10,000 Amazon sellers. Our sellers do um, billions of dollars on the Amazon platform, and we really started as Amazon sellers, but that's not the story we're here for today. We do have three softwares. Um, we welcome you to try any of them, Feedback Genius, Snagshot, and Scope. And today, we're really going to kind of get into learning about moving beyond Amazon. And Seller Labs, we've always been really a... Amazon centric company uh, meaning that most of our software is designed for Amazon sellers for the Amazon platform but um, today we're going to talk a little bit about kind of growing beyond Amazon and so um, I'd like each of our guests to take a second and kind of introduce themselves share their stories so that you can um, hear who they are so Andrew why don't you start awesome well thanks for having me on Jeff um, so my name is Andrew Darian, and uh, I run a company called E-Commerce Fuel. My background is in building kind of just standalone e-commerce sites. So I, coming out of school, was in the finance world for a couple of years and uh, left after a couple of years of doing that to start uh, an e-commerce business called Right Channel Radios. So sold very niche, niche CB radio equipment and ran that for about eight years uh, and sold that just recently within the last six months. Uh, have also run a, a trolling motor e-commerce business and again based completely around our own platform not really on Amazon as much uh, and sold that as well so these days uh, my kind of what I do at e-commerce fuel is run a community for high six and seven figure store owners there so people that uh, uh, kind of have their own independent platforms that, that sell so that's my background I sell a little bit on Amazon not nearly as much as either of the other two guests um, but uh, but understand the space so that's that's kind of my story and where I come from Awesome, and um, I had the opportunity actually to meet Andrew um, at Stephen uh, at Steve Chu's conference. So Steve, we'll have you go next, and uh, and and I know we'll talk about your conference here at some point during the uh, during the webcast. But that's actually where I had the opportunity to uh, to meet Andrew, and uh, and and I welcome and thank him for coming to share his story. Cool. Hey, so Jeff, uh, can they see me right now? Uh, do I have video on me, or is it just in your yeah? Slides? You know, you guys are you guys are all on video as oh, well as screens. Okay, because uh, I don't know if you guys got the memo, but we were supposed to wear our Seller Labs T-shirts today, <laughs> but apparently I'm the only one doing it. So not even you, Jeff. You're not even wearing your shirt. Uh, so my name is Steve Chu. I've been in e-commerce since 2007. I started a store with my wife called BumblebeeLinens.com. Uh, we sell a very masculine product: wedding handkerchiefs. <laughs> And uh, shortly after, I started blogging about my experiences because I'm a DIY guy. I do all my own PPC. I do all my own marketing. Even like the website platform is something that I manage. And so I started blogging at mywifequitterjob.com about e-commerce, started a training class, and then most recently started a conference for e-commerce business owners of which I got to meet Jeff and uh, hang out with Andrew in person. So that's all I got, Jeff. Great, thanks, Steve. And um, yeah, so you know, Steve and Andrew really kind of work with two different types of communities of sellers who are are, are looking to either get started and get involved. And, and Steve, you kind of teach people how to do that from the um, holistic sense of of building your own store, building your own brand, um, and selling on Amazon. And Andrew, you work more specifically with people who are. Um, larger online sellers and so um, we also brought uh, invited Chad Rubin on um, Chad was kind of a late addition to the webinar 
um, mainly because of, of an incident that happened to him in the last two weeks. But I think, Chad, you have a lot to, to add in general, so why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for the, uh, the late notice of joining the, the, the conference call. So, guys, I'm Chad Rubin. I've been selling online since 2008. My parents had a vacuum store. I took their business on the Internet, then realized there was a massive opportunity to go direct to consumer. So I started investing a lot more time in 2009 going direct, uh, manufacturing vacuum filters and vacuum bags that back when sort of direct consumer was not the cool thing to do on Amazon and off Amazon. Uh, fast forward to today, I'm a top 500 Amazon seller. I sell on 20 different marketplaces and channels. Uh, and I started a software business to manage my business and many other large volume seller businesses called Skubana. So um, let's get into the content here and um, want to want to uh, start with a poll question except I kind of messed up and, and my screen isn't working so we can't do that. So if you can kind of enter into the, um, the question box and let us know are you currently selling online um, with your own store? So the question is are you selling online with your own store, yes or no? And if you can just kind of um, post that answer then uh, that would be great for us to see and we'll kind of do a quick tabulation here. Um, because our poll was not set up properly to run. So just kind of looking for people to understand. I'm um, seeing lots of yeses, Russell, Jason, Jeremy, a couple no's. Um, some people asking me to turn the sound higher and lower. So we're seeing um, probably a little bit more to the yes side of people who are currently selling um, on their own store. Um, a lot of people who looks like they're getting started and trying to kind of figure this out. So good, good mix, good mix here of people who are both not selling in their own store and people who are selling in their own store. So we're going to try to cover kind of both of these um, topics and and really try to understand, you know, what does it take to go off Amazon? And so um, I think. You know, the first question I'm going to kind of throw at you, Steve, is how do you know it's it's time to open your own store? You know, how 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 do you know when that time occur is is right? Yeah, you know, I think whenever you feel like you have good traction with a product and that you're going to be selling a long term, I think that's when it's actually time to start your own store. And you got to understand that starting your own store is a much slower process because you have to build your own marketplace so to speak that Amazon provides you got to build your own audience and so the sooner that you can get started with that and anticipate that it's going to take you a little bit longer the better but I would say as soon as you are sure that you're going to follow through on whatever product you're selling that's the right time to start great um, Andrew what how do you kind of feel I, I know you and I have had some great uh, Amazon versus non Amazon debates how do you kind of feel about the you know when is the right time to open your own store I think it depends, make it, it's important to differentiate between opening your own store and pouring a lot of resources and time into your own store, right? So I would say, I mean, if you've got a product catalog or you're just getting started, I mean, you can get a Shopify store up and running with some basic, you know, pictures in, in a couple afternoons or an afternoon, you know? And so from a couple of different perspectives, like it's great to have a online presence. It doesn't have to be the world's best. It's great to have, you know, especially if you've got a domain, get it up there, start getting some kind of presence recognized by Google, maybe small inbound links. So I would say, given the barriers, how low they are, even if you're just going to focus on Amazon for the next six months, do it immediately. You know, get something up there so people can find you and see you offline uh, and maybe purchase from you. Uh, from there, after that, I'd say I'd go with Steve. I think uh, it's and one of the great things about Amazon, there's some downsides we'll talk about, is how quickly you can test something and get traction. Um, and so early on, I'd say, yeah, use Amazon to, to test products, to build up that initial revenue base. But... Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think once you see traction with something, it, it makes sense to start moving over to your to your own platform, your own store. And just to be clear, like we're not talking about just a site for brand registry, right? We're talking about like a fully functional e-commerce store here, right? Right, Jeff? Right. Yeah. That that's what I was going to kind of mention, right? So there's there's two kind of needs for a, an Amazon seller with a store. The first is kind of the really basic store that's really just designed for brand registry, right? So to get brand registry, you have to have a store, you have to have contact information um, and, and information such as that. 
but this is really trying to grow your brand beyond Amazon. Um, you know, when do you kind of put more energy and effort into your store to where your store is kind of um, a, some type of significant player in the amount of sales that it's generating? Right. Chad, let me kind of throw this at you for one second. You kind of, you, you kind of, probably a, a story very similar to a lot of sellers um, on our webcast. You started as an Amazon seller and, and you kind of grew to your own store. So when did you kind of know it was right? Uh, that's a great question. So like, I look at Amazon like a gateway drug. It's super easy to get started and it's hard to ever leave. And so I think Amazon's a great place to get started. But moving off Amazon, you should be taking and bridging your profits that you have off Amazon or on Amazon and moving them off Amazon. And that's how I play blackjack, if you remember, Jeff. So <laughs> I, always take, I always take chips off the table, and I reallocate them and deploy them towards other marketplaces and channels because they never want to have 100% of my revenue tied to one channel. Because Amazon's not a business in my perspective. Amazon's simply a channel to sell on. Yeah, and if you ever want to play blackjack with Chad, he's pretty conservative in how he plays. <laughs> um, but but the later the night gets, the more the more open he gets in playing. So a question just came in. It's 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 from a friend of mine, Peter. Um, I think it's a good question to kind of ask. You know, your your um, so there's there's the concept of off Amazon, and then there's the concept of building your own store. So Steve, are you? Are you selling on Amazon and other platforms such as Walmart, Jet, um, et cetera, or, or, or really in your own store and kind of what's your breakout and, and where do you kind of focus your time? Yeah, um, so right now most of it is on my own store. We started selling on Amazon about two years ago and I can see how it would be a drug because I just threw some stuff up and it just started selling right away with almost zero effort. Um, I'm also we also use eBay a little bit just to get rid of stuff that we can't sell as new but those are the two primary channels and in terms of time commitment I spend probably the majority of my time trying to build an audience for the store and making improvements on our own online store uh, while while just maintaining Amazon and what I found is that the amount of work required just to improve an Amazon store is a lot easier. There's a lot less time commitment involved. Whereas when you have your own store, there's a lot of other things that you need to worry about as well. And and for those, and, and you write your own code, right? You're coding your own e-commerce store right now, right? Yeah, I, I don't actually advise that. It's just a path that I took when I started a long time ago. And uh, and it's there's just so much energy that has been put in there, so it's more of an inertia thing. So today I would probably just go with a standard platform like a Shopify or a Big Commerce. Gotcha. And uh, Andrew, how about you? In terms of what was the question again, the original? In terms of um, your sales with your stores, did you kind of focus mainly on off-channel and, and use Amazon as a supplement, or were you using Amazon as a primary and then off-channel as a, as a supplement? No, I was using, so we, we sold almost everything exclusively through our, our store. And our model, uh, we were reselling existing products, and so Amazon's a pretty brutal marketplace if you're trying to, to resell existing manufacturer SKUs because there's so much competition. So we, we were almost 100% uh, on site. It's interesting though, like you look at, we did this big state of the merchant survey with about 350 uh, respondents the last uh, three months or so. And, and you look at the big channels and it's the biggest one for most people still is their primary store uh, for established merchants. Uh, and Amazon's growing quickly, of course, but uh, and then when, once you get into things like Jet and Walmart and uh, these other uh, channels, they drop off significantly. You know, I think, and even just talking to, to other merchants I know, like uh, Walmart I haven't seen take off a lot of people, and Jet, same thing. So I think uh, those are the two big ones for, that I've seen from other people as well. Gotcha. And, and Chad, you know, you're selling multi-channel, right? So where are you seeing um, your breakout between Amazon and your other channels that you're, yeah, that you're so it, active in. Yeah, so that's a really interesting stat that Andrew presented because in my world, right, 60% of all transactions happening in e-commerce are happening on Amazon, which means 40% is happening off Amazon. So for, for me, like I, want, I look at playing, uh, like e-commerce is like playing Monopoly, right? I want to be on every piece of the board to win. So I'm everywhere on Amazon internationally, eBay, unfortunately, uh, Jet, Walmart, Newegg, Rakuten, Sears, Wayfair, Overstock, Price Falls, uh, and probably another host of other ones. 
And so right now, if you look at my business, I think it's, it's uh, nicely diversified where it's 50% is Amazon and the rest is either coming from my own store, which is on Shopify and Magento, and I'm seeing a ton of traction on Jet and Walmart. Gotcha. So do you see in your future, Chad, building the presence of your own crucial vacuum store or just multi-channel in general and making sure that you're kind of everywhere? So crucialvacuum.com has been built. It's been built for the past, I don't know, eight years or so. Uh, but we just started building a new site on Shopify. Uh, so I'm everywhere. I've always been everywhere. And for me, you need to have the right operations in place, which is why I started Scubana, to manage it all. But at the end of the day, I want to be everywhere to win. And most sellers out there today, even if they're just on Amazon, are just playing the short, the short term, right? They're playing the short, the short game. And to build a long-term business that has a sustainable, you need to be everywhere, including your own shopping cart, which is where most of my mar a lot of my margin comes from. Great. We're going to get into pros and cons here in a, in a second of, of Amazon versus multi-channel versus building your own store. But a question that's come in from quite a few people on the webinar already is focused around the idea of how many SKUs, how many SKUs does it actually make sense? So, um, you know, Andrew, maybe you could take that. What, at what point does it make sense to um, be be putting effort into your own store? Is it is it with multiple SKUs, a single SKU, or is it really depend on your product? I, I don't know if necessarily um, the number of SKUs dictates whether or not you go on Amazon or your own store as much. Uh, I think for, when I look at it, like I'm in a, in a stage where I'm seriously thinking about buying or building another business, having just exited one last you know half year, and and I think it's more of an issue of how well can you how well can you actually execute on the number of SKUs? Like, if you have a product line that where to make different variations is pretty straightforward, then yeah, you can have a lot more SKUs. And if you know, it's the specs are very. Uh, Chad, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this. Um, if the specs are pretty straightforward, you can probably have a much larger catalog. But if you're manufacturing, like, if you're a two or three person team and you're manufacturing custom like high end outdoor bags, like you got to keep that a lot smaller. So I, for me, it's not so much of an issue of which platform you go is as a strategic decision on how well can you execute on something. So Jeff, sorry, the, the question was like, does the number of SKUs affect whether you want to start your store, right? Yes. And really, the number of SKUs is pretty much irrelevant for your site. I mean, you can put together a really good sales page if you have a single product, like a long form sales page type of store and just have a single product at the end with an add to cart. I have a student in my class who just did uh, six figures shortly after launch in October, just a single product, single page website shopping cart. Yeah, and I think I think something that people are getting a little bit confused in the, queue, in, the, in the questions that are coming in as to like, what are we talking about, right? And so we're talking about building your brand off of Amazon, and I think that's really what Steve is talking about there, which is that when consumers are shopping for products, they're using Amazon as a channel for product discovery, right? It's the largest shopping um, search engine. But they're also using your personal brand website as a place for validation, and it's also a place for your customers to engage further with your product. So it kind of depends on what you're selling. So if you're selling a garlic press, um, then maybe your website isn't necessarily all about the garlic press. It's about cooking and things like that, and it's ways to engage your audience into what you're doing. If you have a whole line of products, like like what Steve and what and what Chad has, then your site is more of a retail commerce store around those particular parts, products, and and things that you would engage you know engage with, right? So Chad, you can talk about vacuums and vacuum cleaners. Jeff, you blipped a little bit. I think I got yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'll kind of repeat that. Sorry. Um, what you have is an, an opportunity with building your own store that allows you to build something that's around your brand, right? So I'm going to use Chad's example here where he can talk about vacuum cleaners and how they work and, and why you would use one, you know, one type over another. And he can also sell those products. So when people are searching in other places besides Amazon, they're looking and potentially coming to his site and buying from him directly. Yeah, so look, if I wasn't selling on Amazon, I, to me, I wouldn't be relevant. But if you're not selling off Amazon, I don't think you're relevant either. So when we, I know this topic got started about listings. Um, I have 1,800 of my own listings across 20 different channels. So 
and I think Jeff is cut out again or he's frozen. Uh, but if you look behind, if you actually look behind me, right, I've got two employees that are doing all of the listing optimization and all the things that are necessary to actually be across all those channels. So I focus more so on building high value listings across Amazon and Sears and Jet and everywhere else and automating a lot of the operations, which is why I only have two employees on 10 million in revenue. Great, let's jump into some pros and cons because I think that this is a really critical area of kind of what as a seller do you need to be thinking about. So Steve, can you talk about some of the pros and let's speak specifically not about multi-channel but of building your own website. What are the pros of kind of taking the time, the effort and the energy to build out your own website, your own brand, your own following? Yeah, I mean it's really about getting repeat business and establishing your own customer base. So this past holiday season, 21% of our sales came from repeat customers. We could just you know, email them out and then the sales would just come in. The other advantage with our business that works really well is, so we sell into the wedding industry and we have a really nice B2B presence where we reach out to event and wedding planners and these guys just come straight to us because they need a little bit more hand-holding and these guys just buy from us on a consistent basis whenever they have an event. And so by having your own presence outside of Amazon, it makes your business a little bit more human and you can establish your own customer base. And just selling to a repeat customer in general is going to be a lot easier than trying to get new customers here and there. And it, it just gives you a little bit more longevity with your business. More barriers to entry, so to speak. Yeah, it makes it a little harder for other people to copy what you're doing when you've got your own audience and your own traffic, right? Right. Um, Andrew, what would you kind of say are, are, are a few of the pros of adding on to what Steve says? Yeah, I think his is the biggest one. Another thing I'd add is your own platform, you have the way to be able to merchandise and showcase your products absolutely any way you want. You know, if you're on Amazon, unless you're... Uh, exclusives or you're selling directly to Amazon, you can't do videos, there's a lot of things that you can't do, you're restricted to their to their format and the way that they let you present things. But like with uh, my old CB business, one of our big value adds was that a lot of our pages helped you understand a, a fairly complex product, putting together five or six or seven components. And so we found the pain points in that shopping process, we put little question marks at places where during naturally the shopping process people would have questions, uh, embedded videos, uh, all sorts of stuff that would be very a lot harder to do on Amazon, we were able to do. And I think about like I bought a, for my wife I bought this leather bag uh, for her for like a leather shopping bag for Christmas. And that's the kind of thing where Buying it, it was obviously you're trying to buy a great product, but you're almost trying. But I, I bought into it partially because of the story behind the bag, because of uh, it felt like a luxury product, and the site I bought it from did an incredible job of doing that through videos with narrative, through talking about their uh, just the way the site was designed. It felt very luxurious, and I'm not saying you can't sell high-end products on Amazon. You can, but I feel like for things, especially if you don't know you want them initially you can sell non-commodity products more effectively off Amazon if you have your own store as well. Chad, what would you what, would you add anything to that on the on the side of pros and cons or pros I mean, I mainly? Think, I don't really think it's binary. I think that for me I look at the world and selling everywhere. That's just how I roll. Uh, so I don't know if there's I mean there, look pros there's a lot of pros and there's a lot of cons to being just on Amazon or being just off of Amazon uh, to follow up on what Steve said about uh, humanizing a business, I think that's super important. Uh, Amazon in itself is like a vending machine, right? It's Coke, Pepsi, uh, there's not really room for RC Cola. And so when you shop off Amazon, you have much more um, availability and flexibility to tell your story. So if you look at Crucial Vacuum, for example, right? Free shipping, free returns, phone number at the top, live chat, you don't have to deal with anybody in India. And so there's a, a, a lot of value props to have being an expert and allowing customers to contact you because you have that kind of experience, say, with vacuums. There's someone that's going to be there to help you. Gotcha. I'm seeing um, quite a few questions coming through with regards to um, profit margin. Um, I, I don't know, does that, it, I guess let's start with you, Andrew. Is, is profit margin a pro or a con? And, and you know, what, what, what should people expect with in, ter in terms of profit margin when looking to sell in their own store? It's funny, uh, kind of referring back to that state of the merchant I did, uh, I, I measured that. I said, you know, hey, 
what are your net profit margins? So not gross, but at, at the end of the day, once you pay for not just your product, but your cost per acquisition, your advertising, all that kind of stuff. With Amazon, that's built in naturally at some state. Uh, on your own store, you've got to pay for that. And at the end of the day, they boil down to about the same. I mean, it's going to vary a little bit based on industries and things like that, but your profit margin is going to be pretty close depending on either one. So um, the big advantage isn't so much maybe on the profit per se on an aggregate basis, but on the other things we were talking about, at least from the data that I've seen. Um, how about, does, do you guys have anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I mean, for our store, it's a little different. We actually... Uh, sell our products on Amazon at an increased price than our own store. So profits are a factor for us per se, but if everything was the same price, I would probably agree with Andrew that if you account for the overhead of advertising and maybe people that are packing and shipping, it, it, it'd probably be about a break even, I would say. I, I don't know. We've never done that measurement before. Gotcha. So you're kind of accounting for the extra Amazon fees into your calculation when you're changing your price for Amazon. That's correct, yeah. Okay. Chad, do you price your products differently in different marketplaces? So Amazon does have a rule in their TOS where you need to have price parity. So Steve, I won't I won't tell. Oh, is that right? Okay. Um, <laughs> so we, no, 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 but it's different it's the different products. Like um, we sell them in sets of 12 on our site, sets of four on Amazon, so it's not the same product. Okay, no worries. It's, it's, like, the, it's, it's like the television business, right? The one at Best Buy in Circuit City, they can always do price guarantees because neither store ever had the same TV. Just like mattresses, right? Right. Yeah. One, button, one button is different. Walmart really strongly uh, forces sellers to abide by the price parity as well. So they just sent out an email like, letting people know that like, your price cannot be higher on Walmart than it could be on Amazon or your own storefront. So that's a thing. Um, yeah, but I, yeah, think that's, I, mean, I think that's a good point, though, that Steve brings up, right? So if you sell it in a in your own site on a on a ten pack, and you want to sell it on Amazon on a five pack, you can sell it on a price per unit basis that's higher, and and you can get away with that. But if you're selling um, two of two, the exact same thing on two different sites, then you need the price parity. For sure, for sure. I think the other intangible that we discussed slightly was just recurring revenue, right? Subscription and owning the customer. There's a lot of value to owning the customer at the end of the day, and when you sell on Amazon, it's not your customer, it's an Amazon customer. When you sell on your own site, you actually own the customer, you can remarket, you can implement automation marketing, and uh, constantly dip back into that pocket. Um, tool, um, tools. Chad, what are you using to retarget to your customers, like uh, in terms of email or you know, uh, Facebook retargeting. How are you? How are you kind of marketing to them? What tools are you using? So we're using uh, Clavio for automation marketing. Uh, what else we're we using? I'm using Shopify on the back end. I'm using Critio, which is kind of like Adroll for display following with a little cookie. And is there anything else I missed? I think that's a good start. Okay, so you're not using any type of like click funnels. Are you doing um, Facebook? retargeting or anything like that? Yeah, so we do the uh, Facebook lookalike audiences in Facebook, uh, display ads on Facebook. Gotcha. Steve, what about you? I'm on Clavio as well for email marketing and I use Ad Espresso to manage my different Facebook campaigns and for dynamic ad retargeting, which we were just talking about, I just use the uh, Power Editor in Facebook for that. Gotcha. I'm using I'm using Privy to handle my email pop-ups. And and Andrew, you know, beyond running your own stores, you you um, cultivate and curate a, a community of a of a lot of you know larger um, online sellers. What other types of tools are you kind of hearing um, that they're using and finding success with? In terms of uh, just driving traffic, or just overall for running a store. Yeah, I mean, for I think let's start with running a store, and then and then you know I think a lot of people have questions about the email management and the and the workflow management. Yeah, um, you know I think Shopify's taken. I mean, I've worked with them in the past, so they're just you know full disclosure. But I think Shopify's kind of become the uh, go-to solution for a lot of merchants, at least in our community. Uh, Clavio is a big one on the email side. Mailchimp for a while was kind of written off as kind of, hey, nice for small newsletters and stuff, but I think over the last three to six months, they've really started to up their game in terms of uh, email marketing and segmented, uh, the powerful emailing uh, capabilities. Um, 
reviews, stuff like uh, Yapo and Judge.me, those are really powerful if you're running your own store. That's one of the biggest things. I mean, on Amazon, you think about how you shop on Amazon, reviews are huge. I mean, ranking, of course, in images, but you know, reviews are probably the next most important thing, and getting great reviews from your customers. So uh, there's some great Judge.me and uh, Clavio are some good good ones. Um, those are, and then the ones the other that uh, Chad and uh, Steve mentioned. Those are some of the ones that just pop out immediately. Gotcha. And so, you know, to kind of re to kind of recap, the pros of of building your own store is really on on the side of of profit margin. Um, it's really on the side of owning your own customer, um, kind of owning the experience and the brand. So, if, if those are the pros, what are what are the cons? What are the things to kind of um, you know, what are the things that you need to kind of be aware of that that maybe aren't as rosy as they might seem the first time you uh, you start looking into this? Let's kind of work our way back here, Andrew, if you want to take that one to start. Sure. Um, it's a lot harder. <laughs> I mean, that's the, that's the only downside. I mean, the biggest downside is it just takes a ton more time. Uh, you go to Amazon, you can see so much traction so quickly. Uh, on your own storefront, I mean, you've got to deal with building up a, a web store that uh, really represents your brand, doing it well. The, the hardest thing is traffic, I think, uh, and you've got to pay up today. I mean, it's getting harder and harder and harder um, between what Google and Facebook uh, is are doing. You know, on Google, you're getting it's getting harder to rank because uh, you, know, you got uh, the ad the above the fold organic results are getting smaller and smaller. Facebook is, is still a viable traffic method, but it's getting more expensive and it's a different type of Targeting when you're when you're trying to advertise to people on Facebook, you're trying to catch them in the middle of a browsing. They're not actively searching, so it's a different type of approach you have to do. Um, so th I mean, the only downside is it's harder to get traffic, and it, there's a lot more moving parts. Uh, that's the big downside. Chad, do you have anything you want to add to that? No, I think he's spot on. It's much harder, and I think that's why you see most people not building their own storefront that I talk to in the community. It's just so easy with Amazon, where they just never leave. So. It takes a lot of hard work. It's a lot of a lot of hustle, a lot of good instincts, a lot of reading ecom fuel forums, for example, and learning from others that have lost a lot of hair, lost a lot of money, uh, and time making the mistakes. And so, yeah, driving traffic is definitely an interesting one. Link backs and traffic. Gotcha, Steve. Any uh, any cons that that haven't been mentioned? I mean, it's mainly the learning curve. But I just want to kind of flip that a little bit um, because it's harder to do there's going to be less likely for someone else or a competitor to do that as well. And so that'll give you a competitive edge as well. And plus you're learning all of these tools and platforms that will actually help your Amazon business as well. So it's, it, all the cons are valid, but all the knowledge that you gain from learning how to use all these things is very valuable for any online business going forward. Yeah, and I, I you know, when we started textbooks.com, I mean, that was back in 2007, so the world was definitely a lot different than you could, I mean, we had a generic domain and we owned our space the day we launched, right? Like we, we ranked number one for the word textbooks within three weeks of launching the site, which obviously drives a lot of traffic to your site and to your business. And I think the, the days of ranking on Google um, are significantly harder today than they than they have been in the past and it's very similar a lot of people equate what's happening on Amazon to what happened to Google 10 years ago right and so the ability to to rank quickly on Amazon um, can still happen if you know how to optimize for Amazon properly but that's getting harder and harder it was easier to do last year and the year before and the year before that and so as Amazon continues to get more intelligent about its search and how it does things, you know, it's going to become a more difficult channel. And so if you as a seller um, can figure out this, this hurdle of building your own site, the longevity of your, of, of, of your business um, is probably greater. So a question that I'm kind of getting from a lot of people that I think would be good to address kind of here is um, fulfillment. How do you fulfill your products? Um, and so just to kind of clarify before we start, they might use the term 3PL, which is a third-party logistics company. And um, so if we use the terminology, let's make sure we explain what that is. So Steve, do you want to start? How do you do your fulfillment? Yeah, we have our own warehouse and we have employees do the fulfillment. And the reason we do that is because we do a lot of personalized items. 
So a customer can come on and uh, monogram our items, and then we send them out. We stitch them out by hand, and then we send them over. And the reason why we do that is it's one of the value adds that's very hard to replicate on Amazon right now. Now, Amazon Handmade is out and everything, but it just gives us a leg up on the fulfillment and allows us to control the whole process. The other reason is because we're in the wedding industry, and people tend to want things like right away. Uh, in the early days, there was there were a couple times where I even hand delivered our goods just to create some some good mind share for our business. So we handle everything ourselves. In terms of Amazon, we use Amazon FBA, and so we just kind of apportion out a portion of our inventory and we send it over to Amazon depending on how well it's selling. Gotcha, um, Andrew. Yeah, so my, my old store uh, was was purely dropship based, so we used the dropship model, which most people are probably familiar with, but if you're not, someone else holds the inventory, you buy it when once you have an order to fulfill and they ship it straight out. So uh, on that side it was it was uh, again we weren't selling on an, we weren't selling on Amazon uh, and so it was, it was pretty clean. Got out of that model because I think drop shipping long term is, is facing some pretty strong headwinds, but that's what we were doing. And Chad, why don't you kind of wrap that up because I know you use a 3PL, so you can kind of explain that uh, option yeah. for people. Yeah, so uh, in 2012, I used to have a warehouse. I had about 20 employees, and uh, things were getting out of control. Right? I had a lease, or rent, uh, a lease for a couple of years. Uh, I had to keep on hiring more and more individuals. And you can imagine in the metropolitan area, trying to find a good warehouse employee, uh, paying them a lower wage is, is hard to find. So um, actually, I, I can't even take credit for this idea. My wife said, Chad, you need to do something about this. You need to find a different solution because this is not working for us. So uh, I started the search for an outsourced warehouse. Uh, and I luckily found a boutique warehouse in New Jersey to manage my entire operation, which is not my core competency. Like I didn't go to, I, I, just like Andrew, we have actually very similar backgrounds. We're both from finance. So I didn't come out of school like knowing how to manage low-level warehouse employees. So I outsource that, uh, and it, it has changed my life uh, in so many ways. Gotcha. Andrew, getting a couple of questions from people that um, are curious about the drop shipping side of the business, how did you handle returns when it came to dealing with drop shipping? Yeah, so returns would usually go straight back to the warehouse, uh, you know, to so the company that sold the, the wholesaler more or less. Uh, so they'd ship them straight back there, but it was it was messy. I mean, like um, you've got an intermediary that you have to arrange the return with, and then they send it back. And then if if it's not in good condition, uh, you got to fight with your wholesaler about whether they eat the the, the loss or we do. Um, so long story short, went back to the wholesaler. I'd say maybe two thirds of the time we got a refund. A third of the time we ate the cost because our wholesaler wouldn't give us a refund because the product was in crappy condition. So it was messy. Uh, Chad, there's some people who are asking if you would share the name of the um, warehouse 3PL that you use. I don't know if it's one that you publicly share or not. Yeah, so how about this? Why don't we do this? If they email me, Chad at Scubana, I'm happy to introduce them with a warm introduction. I probably have a few questions to ask. I just don't want to send uh, the warehouse. Uh, I need to get them a certain type of lead because there's high touch items, there's low touch items, high frequency, low frequency, et cetera. But I'd rather do a warm introduction. I'm there, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, he's back. He's back. I just want to point out that like in order to make this all work love, love go -to webinar. in order to make this work, whether it's uh, using a 3PL, whether it's doing FBA, whether it's drop shipping like Andrew does, or whether it's having your own warehouse like Steve, uh, you need to have the right foundation built, which is an operation software. That is numero uno. You, know, you cannot build a, a massive house, a mansion on a crappy foundation, even though we do it in New Jersey all the time. What software would you recommend, Chad? I... Well, now that you ask. <laughs> you're uh, a big NetSuite guy, right, Chad? I heard you're a huge NetSuite fan. <laughs> do, do your research, right? I've made a lot of mistakes, uh, and I promise you I wouldn't have started Stubana if I hadn't been through the grind and tested everything else out there. So, Yeah, so um, I guess on, on, on that note, we'll, uh, we'll kind of move on here to, uh, to our next which is really um, understanding challenges that you'll face. Um, and I wanted to kind of cover this, and I'd like to cover this for about, you know, maybe four or five minutes. Andrew, start with you. We might have covered some of this in the, in, over the webinar so far, but really, like, what type of challenges are, are you going to face when, when you 
um, take on this task of moving to your own store, moving off of Amazon? What are what are things that you can kind of learn from people that have, you know, besides coming on and, and reading from a community, what are things that are, you know, this is one thing that, that I would recommend you, you, you tackle from the beginning. And one of the other things I want to add to the, the conversation from before is that you can now use Amazon. It is expensive, but you can use Amazon to fulfill your orders um, that, you, that you generate on other channels as well. So, Yeah, I think the hardest part about getting your own store going, it, it's kind of a subset of what we talked about is, is you don't have visitors. You've got to drive the traffic. And there's two parts to that. A, every business is going to have a different sweet spot. Every business is going to have a different marketing strategy that's going to be effective. And that's why marketing's hard is because there's no, you can't stamp them out. Um, so I think figuring that out is is difficult. Is 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 it Facebook? Is it is it blogger outreach? Is it uh, is it AdWords? And that takes a lot of trial and error. Uh, and the other other thing is figuring out how much you can spend to acquire a customer profitably. Um, and that's why you know again I mentioned I'm kind of looking at businesses. One of the things I'm really looking at, and I know you know Chad and Steve probably value quite a bit too, is is do you have repeat customers? Because if you do, you can acquire, you can spend a lot more. You can even lose a little bit of money on that first order if you know someone's going to come back and order two or three or four more times. So, so those are the hardest parts, uh, I think. And we could probably do, you know, you could do an entire month-long seminar on, on how you pick the best marketing strategy. But figuring out what works and figuring out how much you can spend, I think, are the trickiest parts. Yeah, those are, those are where you're going to do a lot of trial and error, and, and you just need to kind of play with it. Steve, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, yeah. So I see selling on your own site versus Amazon. I, I see e-commerce like a chain. With Amazon, you only have a couple things that you need to worry about, right? Sourcing and then uh, getting the product listing good and then maybe a little bit of PPC. With your own site, there's so many different links to that chain. And if one of them is broken, then that could pretty much tank your entire store. And so if you think about it this way, the average conversion rate on a store is on the order of 2 to 3%, which basically means that every visitor that you're sending to your site, there's a 97% chance they're not going to buy. And so you have to have all these systems into place on your site to get them back, whether that be email, Facebook retargeting, Google AdWords, whatnot. You have to have all these systems in place, and they all work together with the traffic that you actually bring on your site, including the way you've designed it for conversions as well. So that's the main challenge. Chad, do you have anything you want to add to that? Just the last thing to add is I think that you just need to know what your strengths are. Uh, so for me, it's all about building a brand, but we outsource a ton of our weaknesses. So uh, it's not about doing more for us. It's about doing less, but letting other people that are experts do, do it and do it faster and do it better than we can do it. So we use a lot of remote employees to get the job done. For example, PPC and, and product listing ads on Google. We outsource it. Facebook, done, outsourced. Customer support, done, outsourced. You get it. Yeah, you focus on what you do best, and um, and and really let the um, other experts, you know, focus on their part of the business. We've got a lot of questions coming in here, so I'm going to uh, kind of jump to our our last slide here, and you know, give us a chance to get into this. And um, I know this is something Andrew and I kind of threw in at the last minute. There was a a pretty big Amazon Shopify announcement that came out um, today. Um, I know Andrew, you've had them on your podcast, which I'm I'm sorry to uh, to say is 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 done, right? You retired that um, at the beginning <laughs> of 2017, but not not um, done. Just slowed down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So if you can if you can kind of share what the announcement for Shopify was, and if you can kind of talk about how that's going to impact people who want to use both Amazon and Shopify, I think it would be great for the audience to learn. Yeah, so last week they kind of made this mysterious cloak and dagger announcement they're partnering up with Amazon. And today the details, they kind of came out with uh, announcing what they're doing and some of the functionality. If you have a Shopify store, you probably have noticed some of this. But the big thing is just they're just making it easier to be able to push uh, your products on Shopify over to Amazon. So if you've got an existing store uh, and let's say you've got 100 different products, instead of listing those all from scratch, you can push those with a lot of the data existing and images and things like that to Amazon. There's some other kind of cool things with like inventory. You can you can I think fulfill Amazon orders within Shopify now. Uh, you can uh, so you have one interface. It's almost like a mini ERP. There's a lot of stuff I'm, I think it doesn't do that an ERP would do, but 
uh, has some basic order syncing functionalities, be able to sync inventory, um, things like that. So that's that's kind of the big uh, the big announcement from their side. So I don't know if it necessarily changes anything in terms of how you would approach things, but it does make it a little simpler to to manage both those channels if you're on Shopify. And I think what it signals, or what it what it potentially signals, is that as that 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 relationship is getting stronger, which means that there will be more development in that area moving forward. Right. Yeah, I agree. And there's we were talking about this, Steve. Like, there's other ones that do that too. I think Big Commerce came out with an announcement, uh, a similar announcement in the last you know 30 or 60 days. Um, but yeah, I think the big thing is a lot of these platforms are are starting to integrate with Amazon. So it's hopefully, I mean, that's good if you're. It makes it easier uh, running your own store to make it happen. I mean, it's all it all goes back to what Chad's been saying, right? Amazon's just a marketplace, and you want to be in as many marketplaces as possible. And Shopify is just making it easier to do that. Great. So um, one thing that did not come up during the pros and the cons was um, was was really you know a reason that I brought Chad on um, and wanted to you know have Chad share a story of what happened to him when he woke up on December twenty sixth and uh, and and how kind of having his own store um, helped him you know through that that moment which which um, you know is can be a lot worse for a lot of people. So Chad, do you want to kind of share a little bit like what happened to you um, with Amazon? Sure, I can share it, absolutely. I was pretty public about it on LinkedIn. So uh, day after Christmas, the morning of, I was just wishing an employee a happy holiday on Slack. And she was like, oh, I just checked our Seller Central account and uh, it's asking for us to update the credit card. I said, okay, great. Um, I lost my wallet uh, a couple of days ago and let's update it. So we updated our credit card with a brand new fresh credit card, or updated Seller Central with a, an updated credit card, and uh, within minutes, the account was suspended. So 50% of the revenue is coming from Amazon uh, for our business, and I've been suspended before, three or four times. This is the fourth time, actually. Uh, and so uh, it didn't hurt as bad as it could have hurt, but it always hurts. It always stings. So that's what happened. I spent the whole day on Monday reaching out to people that I've helped in my past, whether they're at Amazon or for Amazon sellers or former Amazon sellers or consultants to get my business back up. So two of the really instrumental people that helped me was uh, Ed Rosenberg uh, and Feedback Repair. So those guys certainly helped me a lot uh, and my account was reinstated within 30 hours and that's incredibly impressive. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's a lot faster. I mean, you know, I think what what this leads to is understanding that by having um, a multi-channel approach or building of your own site, um, I'm sure Andrew and and Steve are, are smiling big because like they know that is like one of the biggest cons of Amazon is right is that you don't have control. Yeah, he's back. You need to repeat what you just said, Jeff. Yeah. Um, so I don't know where I got cut off, but what I was saying is is that this is where you really have this opportunity to have something that's not on Amazon so that if you do get suspended on Amazon you have a backup plan because while Chad was able to come back in 30 hours I know people that have been suspended for three weeks trying to get their business back up and, and going yeah there's there's definitely Great, an let's art go about to um, I was just gonna say there's just there's an art about getting back on Amazon it's an art and partially science and um, I just never play within the rules ever and so I needed to sort of re-examine my infrastructure and reach out to everybody I knew to actually get this to move forward. Or else it would have never happened. It would have taken months. Yeah. And 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 I think one of the things I might have gotten cut off in saying is that I'm I know that's a conversation that Andrew and Steve and I have had offline before as, mm -hmm. you know, one of their biggest fears of being really kind of beholden to Amazon. Um and and this is, you know, almost validation, right? Like, look, you're beholden to Amazon and you lost your business and you were lucky to get it back. There are people who never get it back. I guess it depends on what you did to break the rules. Sure. Great. I want to jump into a Q&A. And within the Q&A, I'm going to kind of leave this up here at the, um, at the, at the end. Um, so that if you are looking to uh, get in touch with any of these three individuals, these are the sites that you can do that. Um, and we've a lot of questions that have kind of come through. And one of the qu questions that I've seen kind of a few times is with regards to 
quite a lot um, all of the tools that you guys are using so I'm not going to ask you guys to repeat the tools but we will go back through the recording and we'll take the tools out and we will include those in a list to everybody um, so I think that'll be a, a good way for you guys to to uh, to get that um, yeah, some people want to know why you got suspended, Chad. I don't know if you want to go into the details. Yeah, of course, of, that. of course. I have nothing to hide. So Amazon said that I had another account. And uh, I know a lot of sellers that have other accounts, but I'm actually not one of them. I only have one master account. Uh, so Amazon's term of service, typically you're only allowed to have one account unless you notify them and still you're not really allowed to have it. So I don't know. And then so I don't know how they associate my, my credit card with another account. But I got an email the following day after I escalated it and escalated it and escalated it, saying that they err on the side of caution and they reinstated my my account. Gotcha. Yeah, it could be triggered for any number of reasons. Um, Joe Freeman, you win for best question of any webinar I've ever done. Um, Joe's question is: You guys are all doing a great job on this webinar. One question: Do you need to wear a black shirt to be successful in selling online? Black or gray, either one, but one of those two, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Joe, what I'm, what I'm going to say is that uh, you you are going to win a, a free shirt. I'm going to get you your black shirt so you can be famous. <laughs> um, so go ahead and, and share your address with me, and we'll get that, um, we'll get that taken. Um, let's see. That was all I'm coordinated sure. between us, by the way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, so I think we kind of got into customer base, um, but you know, are there any tips or techniques that you guys have on on initial building of a customer base when you're when you're building your own store? I guess Steve, we can start with you. Yeah, just make sure that you uh, get some people piece of identifiable information from your customer for everyone that lands on your site, whether that be email. Right now, I'm experimenting with Push Crew. Um, there's just various ways to get uh, customers' information so that you can contact them later on, like like a Facebook pixel, a Google pixel, that sort of thing. And so I'm going to just kind of jump through these questions, ask each of you kind of one question and move on, but if you want to add to anybody else's answer, feel free to. Chad, what are the uh, top three marketplaces to target beyond Amazon? So, so you're looking to go multi-channel not build your own site, but you want to target, what are the top three to kind of target? All right, so to piggyback on the last question, and customers I had traction with, and then load it into Facebook with a lookalike audience, and uh, find that similar demographic or profile to target them with my, with my storefront experience. Uh, in terms of take those out of top three marketplaces, I would say one is your own shopping cart, two is Walmart, uh, and three is Jet.com. Four is Wayfair. Great. Um, Andrew, thoughts on Google Shopping. Um, do, do people in your community talk about Google Shopping? Is it still a thing? Yeah, definitely still a thing. Actually, I'm going to defer this to Steve because he's got a lot more experience with Google Shopping than I do. But, I mean, he'll probably get into more of the nitty-gritty, but it's definitely still a thing. And, uh, Steve, I mean, it's something you do and it works well for you right now, isn't it? Yeah, actually, Google Shopping is our highest converting PPC ad platform right now. And in fact, when I was at ECF Live uh, last year, I picked up a bunch of things from one of the forum members too, which further increased the visibility of my shopping ads. The only problem with shopping is it's not really a high volume sort of outreach tool. Uh, you're kind of limited by the number of searches for whatever your product happens to be, and it's pretty much up to Google when your ads show up. Gotcha. Just kind of looking through, I only have like 350 questions that have come in, plus the 500 from before. So, trying to make sure we uh, are covering topics we haven't um, covered just yet. Um, Andrew, question for you: What is the kind of number one complaint that that is kind of brought up in your community? Like, what are people kind of complaining about with regards to? Uh, I guess the you know. Let's keep it non-political, right? We'll kind of say it's non-political and keep it to e-commerce. But what are the what what are the complaints that that people are complaining about? The challenge, the biggest challenge that they're facing um, in in growing larger stores. I think probably the it's funny I was chatting with a lot of our new kind of top members this last week, and one recurring theme that I heard from a lot of them is it's really difficult to find someone uh, that you can outsource your paid traffic to. Uh, 
and you know have them do it well over the long term. So finding a AdWords expert or a Facebook expert, someone like that that can really do it well long term. So overall, just just finding competent digital marketers to outsource. Not to say they're not out there because you know, Chad's uh, had success with that, and uh, it's it can it can be done, but it, it's 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 tough to do. So either finding a great partner you can work with that trust that you trust, uh, or being able to build those. Uh, you know that kind of IP and those resources in house, but that's that's probably the biggest challenge I'm seeing. And also with costs, you know, uh, acquisition costs getting more and more expensive. Like it's just going to get increasingly more expensive to pay to get traffic, and that's something else people are seeing year over year. It just gets more expensive. So, um, I mean, yeah, those are the biggest gripes and challenges I'm seeing with with merchants. Um, Chad, I'll, I'll kind of direct this at you since since you're a bigger seller on Amazon um, than than you know than uh, Steve, who's you know does more on his own site, are you doing Amazon International at all? Are you uh, have you pushed to any of the other Amazon marketplaces? Yes, so we are completely international. I even have an outsourced warehouse in Ireland. Uh, I would say if you're looking at Amazon US or you're on Amazon US, your next step should be immediately Amazon Canada. It's just very logical. And then after that, I think most people look at Amazon UK as the place to go, but interestingly enough, Amazon Germany is the second biggest marketplace asset that Amazon owns. So I think getting to Amazon Germany, it's harder, right? And that's why nobody does it, but once you go there, it is completely ripe for the taking. Yeah, um, what, what about you, Steve? Are you, uh, have you experimented beyond the US with your products? Uh, we just sell to Canada and our top three countries, which I believe are Australia, the UK, I'm sure the UK and Canada, uh, but not on Amazon just yet. Gotcha. So um, I think we've covered most of the topics and questions that have come in, and um, I typically do share the questions with our presenters so that if there are something specific that they want to follow up with a guest, um, you know, before uh, or directly afterwards that they can. Um, and so I uh, thank you guys for coming on. I want to give you each kind of a second to kind of, um, you know, pitch, give yourself a little pitch um, here at the end for, again, how people can find out about you or anything that you've got coming up. And I thank you guys for sharing your time with our audience and, uh, and, and for being here and sharing today. So, uh, Chad, why don't you go first? Sure. Uh, well, thanks for having me. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Uh, Again, I'm Chad Rubin. I've been doing e-commerce for 10 years. Founded Scubana to help you run and, and automate your entire marketplace business. Uh, I also wrote an awesome book that you can get off Amazon. Uh, no surprise there. Cheaper, easier, direct. Uh, and it's like three bucks, but it's probably the best three bucks you'll ever spend. And um, I'm, I'm just appreciative that I'm allowed to, to talk about my, my experience with everybody on the call today. Yeah, and Chad, also, you sit on the board for um, the Prosper Show, right? And so let's give a little plug out to the Prosper sure, Show because absolutely. Uh, I'll so be Prosper speaking at that show, conference as well. So Prosper Show is actually a great – it's the biggest Amazon sellers conference in the United States. Um, and not only are there high-quality speakers, none of them are paid, uh, but the people that go and the kind of learning that happens, not just inside the – the halls, but outside the halls in the hallway, for example, and the kind of gold nuggets you'll get uh, are incredible. So if you like what you heard on this webinar today, imagine three, day, three days of it, of just learning and immersing yourself. Yeah, and uh, so Prosper Show had, I think, 600 people at the conference last year, and uh, they're anticipating over 1,000 at the conference this year for it's, 2017. Uh, 1,700 people. Yeah, and so that, that shows at the end of March in Vegas, um, prospershow.com. So let's go ahead and jump over to uh, Steve. Yeah, so if you guys are looking for some instruction on how to get started with your own site, you can head on over to mywifequitterjob.com. I offer a free six-day mini course that will kind of go over the basics to see you know, if, you want, if you're interested in pursuing it further. I also run my own conference at sellerssummit.com. It is uh, very different from the Prosper Show. I try to keep my conference very small and intimate. So last year we sold like 100 tickets, so you can actually get to know the speakers and the other attendees. And it's a very learning-focused conference. Uh, I don't bring up speakers to talk about 
you know, inspirational stuff and that sort of thing. All the talks are on specific tactics to grow your e-commerce business. Yeah, and and uh, I thank you again for having me. And um, for those who who don't know, it's uh, the first and only time I've done magic from from the stage. <laughs> So I, I did a magic trick to illustrate uh, optimizing your listing on Amazon and I vowed that uh, when I return in 2017 that I will not do magic because I don't want to be dubbed <laughs> as the guy that does magic. I was like, Jeff, are you sure this magic thing is going to, you know, but it, it worked out. Yeah. Uh, so Andrew, do you want to uh, kind of wrap it up? Sure, yeah. Well, thanks, Jeff, for having us on. If you're still listening, thanks so much for, for taking an hour out of your, your day and uh, listening to us. And um, I just say, again, I kind of gave a little intro of myself at the top, but if you're, a, uh, if you're an established merchant and um, you want to connect with other uh, kind of experienced e-commerce entrepreneurs, that's what our community e-commerce fuel is all about. So we vet everyone to make sure everyone brings something of, of uh, some experience uh, to our, our form. Uh, and so if you're selling 250K, a quarter million on your own site, or if you're doing over half a million on Amazon uh, every year, you're eligible to uh, to be part of the community. So the community is just, it's an active forum. We've got close to 1,000 members. We do a live event every year uh, where it's it's just experienced entrepreneurs. You have to be part of the community. But we have some proprietary software that helps you with with finding and picking the right tools for on your business. There's a lot of different facets to it. But if that's something you're interested in uh, and you meet those uh, kind of revenue guidelines, uh, ecommercefuel.com, you can learn more about there. And you would love to have it be a part of the community. So. Great. Well, thank you, everybody, again, for attending. We appreciate it. A recording of this will be made available and shared, as well as some of the notes from this. And again, we thank our speakers for joining us today, and everybody have themselves a great day. Awesome. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Bye-bye.